Hello and welcome back to another session. Today's session is going to be about Terraform. It's one of the most popular DevOps tool mainly because it's open source, free and super easy to use. Terraform is used to manage your infrastructure through code. So basically you write config files which are in HCL language that is HashiCorp configuration language. The programming style followed here is declarative meaning you need not worry about the flow of execution or the state. Terraform handles it for you. You just have to write what you want your end result to be. So this will become more clear when we write our first template in few minutes. You write this by using the modules which are already exposed by the open source community. There are thousand plus providers at the moment like AWS, Azure, Kubernetes, Docker, etc. Once you have written the config file, you run a plan command to determine what are the resources that needs to be created, modified or deleted. And then you actually execute the plan by applying the changes. Terraform determines the changes by looking at the state file which contains the current state of the infrastructure. Then finally, you can even remove the file uh, infrastructure by running a destroy command. This is the whole life cycle of Terraform. This is very useful as you can manage multiple clouds in a single place and it creates repeatable configuration. Uh, that is, you can apply the same configuration file in various environments. Now let's write our first Terraform config file to create few resources in AWS. Okay, so we are going to use AWS provider from Terraform registry. Terraform registry provides thousand plus providers at the moment. You can choose one as per your use case. In case of AWS, you have to specify the credentials. You can either mention them in the environment variables by specifying the access key, secret key, and the default region. Or you can even use an IAM role. In both the cases, the IAM role or the access key, secret key should have the right privileges to create the resources that we mentioned in the Terraform template. In this use case, I have already exported the access key, secret key, and the default region in the terminal. And for this session, we are going to use 0.15 Terraform version. Okay, so the main folder structure for the Terraform files will basically contain the main file output and the variables. So the main file is, the, is where you specify the resources that is to be created. So the first section within the main file is the required providers section where you specify all the providers which are used within that particular Terraform template. So in our case, we are just going to use AWS and you have to specify the source and the version. Both these information can be found in the documentation or in the Terraform documentation. And once you specify all the required providers, and the next section, you can specify any common parameters for each specific provider. So this will be used throughout the Terraform template until unless you override them. So in this case, we are just specifying the AWS region. And next starts the resources. So you can specify each resource with a Terraform ID. In this case, it's AWS VPC. And then the ID of the resource within the Terraform template, in this case it's VPC, then a bunch of attributes that, that the resource requires. There are few attributes which are mandatory and few are optional which you can ignore. In case of VPC, CIDR block is mandatory, so I have given that and then a couple of tags. And the next resource here is subnet. So you can even mention a count, count attribute for a resource, which determines how many such resource that needs to be created. So in this case, if you specify two availability zones in the input variable, then it will create two subnets, one in each availability zone. And then the VPC ID is referenced from the previous resource, which is created. So you, uh, the reference is very simple. You have to just specify the Terraform ID and then the ID of the resource within the template, then whatever attribute we, you are trying to refer in that particular resource. So in this case, we are trying to refer ID. Next is a CIDR block. 
again this is an input variable and this input variable is an array so we are using an index to refer to the particular value within the array and then we have specified tags and the next resource is in, uh, ec2 instance so this instance we are trying to create one instance per subnet so there is going to be a vpc and then two subnets within that vpc and one instance per subnet so again we are referencing the subnet uh, in the instance and then few other attributes like the disk and tags so that's it so all together we should have five resources that are created so one vpc two subnets and two instances so the next file is the variables file where you specify all your input variables each variable has to have uh, should have a data type and then you can optionally specify a default value for each variable and in case of subnet cidr and availability zones you can see that we have specified two values so this is how there's two resources which are being created and if you don't specify a default value here then you can specify an input at the time of executing your terraform template and next is the output file where you specify the output variables that is after your terraform is executed these will be given back as the output so in our case we are just trying to get back the private ips of the ec2 instances so it's very simple we just have three files so the first thing which we have to do is to initiate the terraform execution so for that you have to run a command called as terraform init so before that just notice that for now we have just three files here the main output and the variables file once you run the terraform init command it will try to download the aws provider which you have mentioned in the terraform file so it has imported that so if you go back to the uh, visual studio console now you can see a specific folder called as dot terraform and under that you will find all the providers which you have specified in the required provider section so if you have specified more than one provider in that section then each of that provider will be downloaded so once that is done so the very first step step is to initiate it using terraform init and the next is to run a plan command so the plan command will tell you what are the resources that terraform is trying to create change or destroy so in our case it's trying to create five resources and zero resources to change because this is the first time we are running it and zero resources to destroy so it also gives the detailed information of all the five resources that is to be created as you can see here if we scroll all the way up you will be seeing two instances so there is one instance here then this is the second instance as we have given two availability zones and then two subnets and one vpc so these are the five resources which the terra which terraform is trying to create once we are okay with this we can run terraform apply so which will actually execute the terraform um, template and create the resources for us so it again displays all the resources that is to be created and ask us to confirm it so once we confirm it it will go ahead and start creating the resources and notice that terraform itself calculates the dependencies and creates in that order so it creates a vpc first and then the subnets and then the instances so you can see the instances being created here and we have got the instance private ips as well as the output so this is how you execute the basic terraform template so the next thing what we are going to do is try to make few changes and see if that's being reflected so what i'm trying to do now is very simple i'm trying to remove one of the availability zones and one of the subnet cidr uh, ranges so that 
two uh, resources should be destroyed now. There is one subnet and one instance. So if we run the plan command again, it will show that two resources are to be destroyed. Zero to add and zero to change because we are not adding any new resources or changing anything. So it's trying to resource uh, delete one instance and one subnet. So how Terraform identifies this is by using a state file. So you can see a new file being added into your folder, which is terraform.tfstate. So Terraform keeps track of all the resources which are there in the AWS, which are created by using this Terraform template and all the attributes which are associated to it. So it has the entire details and this is how it calculates what is changed or what what is uh, deleted or what is to be added. So you can see all the attributes which are associated to the resource. So it has uh, both the subnets and the VPC and also the instance. So it keeps track of all the attributes for each resource. So even if you try to change a single attribute of the resource, Terraform will still identify that and notify you at the time of the plan stage. So once you are happy with this plan, then you can go ahead and do a Terraform apply, which will then execute the uh, plan and destroy the two resources. So as you can see now, we just have uh, one private inst uh, sorry, one instance and the two resources are destroyed. That is one subnet and one instance. So once you are done with all these, you can even verify it by looking at the Terraform state file again. You will see only one uh, subnet and one instance at this point and then a VPC. So we just have three resources. And once you have done with all your experiments, you can even do a Terraform destroy, which will go ahead and destroy all the resources. So this is a simple Terraform template. Hope you found it useful. If you have any further questions, please leave them in the comments below. Or if you want any specific details in specific Terraform topics, please let me know. See you soon in the next section. Thank you.